whether you're reading a sacred text like uh, the book of Revelation in the Christian New Testament or uh, sitting down to watch uh, the latest George Romero zombie movie, um, horror is an aspect of apocalypse, uh, a situation where uh, a character is uh, suddenly in an entirely different world where order has been replaced by chaos uh, and violence and dislocation. And so I wanted to look at some aspects of the horror story and kind of think through Whitehead's uh, use of that genre uh, as, he, as he writes Zone 1. Um, first of all, a couple notes on just thinking about horror as genre here. Um, and you may think through your own classroom experiences here if you've ever taught horror. But what is it that horror engages in the reader as a genre? And two of the great um, users of this genre, H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe, look for very distinct visions of where horror is located. Lovecraft sees the horror coming from outside uh, the human being, that, the, the, uh, that horror is rooted in uh, some outside force, some uh, returning outside force that has come, you know, to uh, to end human life as we know it. Um, Poe, though, takes the horror story uh, and turns it into uh, a forced interior vision. So the character finds horror within him or herself in the end. Um, and as Poe details that, that kind of inner vision, you know, the effect on the reader is uh, a singular effect, according to Poe, is the reader feels horror with him or herself um, in the end. So Lovecraft looks outside for horror. Poe looks inside for horror. And so when you look at Whitehead's novel here, are you looking for horror in terms of its 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 outside uh, narrative, or are you looking at it as a as an interior narrative um, as Mark Spitz finds his way through this world? Uh, horror depends upon. Uh, a sense of trauma. Uh, the trauma disrupts what we think of as a whole narrative. And so the, the, the disintegration of, of, of civilization, the disintegration of the city, uh, and the trauma responses to that disintegration uh, leaves a sense that, that the storyline has been disrupted. Buffalo tries as a provisional government to uh, reinstitute a whole narrative or a storyline of development and progress, but that's continually disrupted. And how does that uh, horrific vision leave uh, the characters in this novel trauma uh, in the end? Uh, the horror also can engage anxieties uh, regarding social or cultural narratives. And uh, Jordan Peele, uh, a filmmaker here, is is particularly adept at this. You know, the the, the kind of um, stories that underline American culture, how he disrupts those and turns them inside out and kind of forces you to, to look at the effect of those stories and how, uh, how we imagine a, a sense of order in American culture uh, versus, you know, the effects of that order on others uh, is, 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 is horror producing uh, for the viewer. Uh, another aspect of this is the sense of monster in the horror story. Uh, what is the reader's sense of identification or repulsion uh, with the monster? Mark Spitz has this in Zone One as he, you know, begins to look at the zombies and sees himself in some ways uh, within their presence. Uh, is he repelled by them? Does he, at points, identify with them? As reader, how do you find a sense of, you know, of identification there? How do you feel yourself repelled by them? Uh, that's part of the horror story as well. If you look at like the kind of present fascination or present ongoing fascination with with serial killers as a as you know as as, as a uh, subject for filmmaking and novel writing, uh, there's also a sense of the reader's voyeuristic pleasure in observing inner psychological workings here that 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 kind of uh, drives the horror tale. That the reader can see the workings, you know, of a violent mind, or the reader can see the workings of a um, an inhuman presence in some ways. And so that contributes to the feeling of horror. Uh, you can also look at horror for, as Alfred Hitchcock did, where you start to explore the horror that's, you know, just barely beneath everyday life. You know, the, uh, 
situation of who is a stranger to you and you know in what ways can you trust the the stability or order of your own life and the uh, the, the the institutions and structures that surround you you know that, that horror is always you know just below the surface of that uh, seeming order and is waiting to peek out at you um, in what ways does you know does does Whitehead perhaps sometimes utilize that you know uh, in moments within the novel and uh, in in particular in in our reading of, of horror right um, that as Stephen King notes uh, you know, in his thinking about the about horror genre, you know, the, the the horror engages us with nightmare in some ways, right? Which is nightmare he understands as the space that's situated between the two deaths or ends. So, you know, how does sitting and reading a horror novel um, and its and its death, uh, violence or end, how does that situate? us in regards to our own sense of end, our own sense of death, um, or our own sense of connection with the, the violence of the world. Uh, in what ways does the end become more apparent to us as we uh, take in a literary or cinematic end? So with that in mind, look at just a couple aspects of, of horror um, here. First, the zombie apocalypse, you know, in what ways does Whitehead kind of tap into, you know, uh, common cultural uh, appropriations of, of the zombie apocalypse as a, as a horrific narrative. First of all, you know, th that sense of disruption of cause and effect in the, uh, in the, in the zombie apocalypse, right? That the plague itself that, 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 that makes people into zombies doesn't let you in on its rules, right? There's no sense, no clear sense of, you know, what is the origin of this? You know, the, uh, is it, you know, is it a uh, a psychological condition? Is it you know a physical condition? In what ways is it a metaphysical condition that you don't know what the cause is in the end, and therefore you're always kind of off guard because you don't know you know what is it that that's driving this? Um, the undoing of boundaries uh, and the setting of boundaries is an is an aspect of horror here, right? That suddenly there is a seemingly firm boundary between uh, us and them. There was a single us now. They're reviling a single them. And the conflict that is implicit in that that, that boundary drawing um, is significant here. But the boundaries between are also undone in the novel, right? The boundary between who is living and who is dead. You know, they, they try to kind of draw a line between, you know, that sense of scales and uh, versus those zombies who are just kind of, un, you know, undergoing kind of repeated patterns of ritual, you know, as they go through New York to, to liquidate uh, those, you know, zombies in the city, you know, who's living and who's dead. Uh, it's, a, it's a murky line that White Hit draws within the novel. And are you comfortable with how the boundaries are drawn and, and how they're set and how firm they are in the end? Um, and how uh, kind of a what is assumed to be kind of a basic human impulse, you know, is is engaged here as well. You know, and this goes, you know, back to Puritan fear, fears, uh, you know, in the American in the American space, you know, that the, the wilderness or wasteland, you know, is is terrifying, is, is horrifying in the end. Uh, and as Mark Spitz looks across the barricade and sees that it was not the dead that passed through the barrier, but the wasteland itself, right? That, that it's the chaos of the wilderness, it's chaos of the wasteland uh, that pushes itself in to the, you know, imagined order of the city. Uh, and that brings him horror here. The, 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 the collapse of time here is also significant in, in, in the ways in which uh, Whitehead depicts the horror of this story. Um, you know, the, the, the ways in which uh, the zombies come to be seen, you know, as a non-human force in some ways. Uh, the monsters were a kind of weather after all, that as the soldiers on the wall start to kind of examine the, their patterns of, of attack upon the barricade, uh, their appearance, the numbers of them, when they're, you know, gathering, why they're gathering, how they're gathering, that they become kind of a non-human force, uh, that they come to be seen as, as non-human uh, in the end. 
is is a marker of of of, of a of a time that is past um, and a loss of a, a loss of connection um, uh, with these others. Uh, it, as one of Mark Spitz's you know companions along the way, Quiet Storm uh, uh, puts it to anyone who can read this: Stay away, please help. Remember me, and in that short narrative, stay away, please help. Remember me. That 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 there's a there's a very kind of human sense of uh, of loss and mourning of disintegration of the of the culture um, and of one's attachment to others that that is 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 told in that you know six word narrative there, um, and then the final moment of horror. Uh, as you know, as the barricade is you know being is is, is being threatened, um, the soldiers uh, note through Fabian that we've lost contact with everyone, and so it's that sense of isolation that is ultimately kind of horrifying uh, in the end, and, and sets them on the run, uh, sets Mark Spitz back into flight. Uh, that the end has come. That the end is a the end is a definitely uh, sense of a, a sense of time has been lost here. The other level on which Whitehead regards horror in this and in his other work as well is in how this novel connects to the larger horrors of American history. Um, and the American history in this sense is in the way that Ralph Ellison, the great uh, African-American fiction writer and essayist, uh, saw it as, you know, the great unwritten history of the Americas, right? The, the things that, the, the, the parts of the narrative that um, remain untold or, the, or remain unknown or unacknowledged um, in you know your seventh grade history book in some ways, and Whitehead says this right that it, by kind of engaging that that symbolic sense of reconstruction. So reconstruction refers in the novel to uh, the provisional government at Buffalo's attempt to reestablish order in the midst of the zombie apocalypse. But Whitehead is speaking reconstruction also in terms of the reconstruction of the American South after the. Uh, civil war, the development of the Ku Klux Klan, of new terrors, of new uh, legal impediments to uh, former slaves' rights in the American South. And so Reconstruction, you know, I think works on both levels here, both in, the, in terms of its, you know, uh, place within the narrative as well as its kind of historical resonances as well. And Whitehead engages this in in his other novels, um, particularly John Henry Days, and uh, in the Underground Railroad, uh, that sense the the, the 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 history of 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 American engagement with race is always kind of an underground history. That how do you recover it, uh, and 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 how do you recover that unwritten narrative here? And I think that's part of this novel as well, um, as he writes on page one twenty seven. The the you know he he's thinking about the as. Spitz looks at the, the, the barricades that mark off zone one, but there's also the personal barricades that keep other people out and our madness in so we can continue to live. It's what this country was built on. And so the, you know, the, the, the sense of American disruptions and American dislocations that are so much a part of our story as, you know, a shared story, but are unacknowledged in some ways. Uh, the discontinuities in how we live up to the you know our creeds and constitution um those are part of uh the barricades that are you know symbolically being engaged horrifically engaged by whitehead in this story and he speaks on page 176 right of the alchemy of reconstruction that you can get back to the past in some ways right that you can uh that you can recover some former sense of glory as imagined as that might be, and Zone One is constantly going back to that, you know, symbolically, and uh, through its 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 planning. Um, so, as Whitehead writes, the alchemy of Reconstruction to connect the isolated camps and forts one by one, and bid the life-giving vital material flow once more. You know, can you recover an America of the past? You know, and what horrifying vision do you find when you go back into that history? Uh, that is a part of the horror of Zone 1 as well. Thanks. <laughs>